Hi there. In this video, uh, just a short video, is just to um, just just to take a quick look at the graphics layer and sort of what it's what it does and what it's capable and what what you'd use it for. So I've got a map project here. I've got quite a few layers of all kinds of sources from all different sources. Um, and um, these are some uh, triple SIs, uh, sites of sort of special scientific interest and that sort of thing in the uh, here in the UK. And um, with the graphics layer, you can you can just sort of add um, notations. Uh, it's where you don't really want to create a feature class or anything. You just want to sort of drop a few notes, a few notations onto the map uh, and just store them with the project file. Now, because you store it with the project file, you're going to have a maximum, I think it's of, of 10 megabytes. So, and to be quite honest, if you're getting anywhere near that, you should seriously be considering a feature class. Um, but um, but certainly um, you can store a few things. So if I uh, if I'm, I'm on my on my map here, you see a button here, add graphics layer. So I click that and immediately puts a graphics layer uh, sort of um, name in there, which I can uh, rename or what have you. I can um, rename it. I can um, look at the properties and that sort of thing, and I can create a group of. Uh, graphic layers. You can have multiple graphic layers. I could carry on pressing that and it will just number them up, you see. Um, but let me get rid of those. Just keep it straightforward. So, um, and graphics layers, they're, they're not compatible with scene, by the way. Um, you can work with them in sort of 2D, but um, they're, they're not compatible with um, uh, scene, just, just to warn you on that one. So graphics layer, as it sounds, add graphic, add, add graphics, add annotations. So I've got the graphics layer selected and you see I've got uh, graphics and graphics layer. There's, there's linear referencing available because um, of this editable layer, but um, linear referencing, another video. So I've got graphics, there's all the graphics settings and the whole layer, there's all the layer settings, just like for normal sort of layers, i.e. changing transparency, swiping, masking, that sort of thing. Under graphics, there's uh, lots of different drawing tools here you can do all kinds of stuff but let's do something um, you know a bit different let's go to um, picture and drop a picture in so I click that and now it's prompting me for a picture so I've got a um, selected a picture of a tree here and I've got crosshairs and I'll put it uh, let's say there um, and it's literally just kind of dumped the, the, the photo on top of the map, the image. So I can resize, reposition. So you can see it's very much just, just dumped there, as would be any text or any other sort of polygons or line objects, what, what, whatever tool you select from here. Um, I've just selected an image because it's something different. Obviously, there's properties associated with the image in terms of how it looks, the scale, uh, default transparency, um, and, and the you know the, the width size etc so there's the there's those sorts of um, settings uh, and of course because it's in a layer if I get a graphics layer for the whole layer I can set the transparency and sort of have some level of looking through that um, you can see that there I can see through let's let's leave it a, a sort of slightly there you go so I can I can see a bit through that image um, and um, uh, yeah, I can do that. It can also take play, uh, take part in masking. So uh, you see, I've got these sort of black um, these these boundaries here for tr uh, sites of um, uh, special interest. These these polygons, these with black outline there. Uh, what I'd like to do is kind of mask this photo, this graphic element with that layer. So I can go straight to masking here. You say select the triple side boundary, um, and then you'll see that process happen. So now you can see that as I sort of put it over, um, well, it effectively goes underneath that layer because it gets masked out. It's kind of getting this sort of dynamic cookie cutting taking place. So, um, and, and that obviously I'm doing this with a raster just because I can with a photo, but uh, with a JPEG, but you could also do this with vector geometry. And masking happens on all, um, you can do that with all sorts of uh, layers. So it's not just um, something for graphics layer it's uh, but but I just wanted to show in graphics layer to show that you you, you can treat it very much like a ordinary layer uh, to, to a great degree so um, uh, once it once you've done you're messing about and put your graphics in etc 
Uh, one thing to note is, you, you, you know, once you've done all that, you can then share it. You could go to the graphics layer, right hand click, click on sharing. You could put it on, um, uh, sa save it as a uh, layer file, as a, as a layer package. Um, obviously, put it in ArcGIS Online or just save the definition um, locally. So, the, so you can keep all the symbology and what, what it is and, and sort of uh, save it locally. So let's do that. Let's sh uh, share as a layer package. Um, I'll still keep it uh, um, yeah, let's, let's my graphics layer. Let's do that. Let's do test, test. And, and you can see it'll upload to my um, Archer's account. Let's just analyze that. And let's package. So now it goes, goes off to package. So it's putting it all together. And then we get the option of managing the package. And what that what that effectively means that it's now on um, uh, in ArcGIS Online, the, 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 the graphics um, that I created and can be downloaded by other users have that uh, have that access, you know, can be downloaded or open directly into ArcGIS Pro. The um, uh, and then finally, what you can do here as well, uh, although I've used a um, photo, so the um, this tool in the toolbox won't actually work that well with a photo. Well, it won't work. It won't work. Um, you need some um, uh, sort of actual graphics, something a bit more um, accessible, should we say? So let's just put some. Uh, uh, well, let's just put some. Draw our own um, rounded rectangle. Let's do that. So we got that rounded rectangle, um, and I can um, draw other stuff. And in the geoprocessing toolbox, if you search for graphics, you can find a tool there called Graphics to Features. Um, you can see an exclamation mark there because my my previous run actually failed because I I did give it a go with the photo. And it failed. It kind of not that unexpected, really. So I've got this this graphic here. So my input graphics is the graphics layer, uh, graphics type. Actually, yes, it's a polygon. I know that. Let's just call that. Um, I don't know. Um, it'll, it'll store in my project database. And then you see delete graphics after conversion. So I run that, and you'll see the graphics layer here. And uh, that that graphic that was there before is gone. And um, and it's been replaced by my um, uh, feature class. If we go to properties, go to um, source. You can see that um, yeah, it's just stored in my sort of base um, base workings in the GDB. So there you go. So they're quite straightforward, really. Uh, there's just a couple of things to watch out for. Uh, so um, like not, not we're not working in scene you can't do too much of this because it will sort of blow up the project file and like I say it's 10 megabytes I just quickly look that up um, and you know if you're doing too many of these 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 graphics should be a feature class anyway but you can export you can share uh, via art just online or just as a local file that you email to people um, but art just online is a good way to to get it shared out there and uh, anyway, so that's a quick look at um, graphics layer. I uh, hope you find that useful. Thank you.